Hello, Lewis and Kate. Uh, I must admit, this is rather strange because I rarely do interviews with more than one person. So um, thank you both for joining me in this, uh, which something that feels like a therapy group (laughs) or or something (laughs) like that. Um, So today we're talking about uh, the films that you created uh, that are being featured in the Cardiff International Film Festival. Um, For you, Lewis, to begin with, um, your affiliation with the festival, um, when did it start? Um, we've been quite lucky with the festival. We've been, I think we've had a film in for the last three years, um, each time it's ran and we've always had a great time. We got to go to the award ceremony last year with Showdown, which won the Critics Choice Award. Mm -hmm. So that was an amazing night. And, um, yeah, we're just very grateful to be invited to be a part of it again. Yeah. What's it like seeing your film that you have worked so hard upon uh, on a big screen with loads of people watching? Is it quite nerve wracking or is it is it um, does it make you feel good? It is nerve wracking. It's always nerve wracking because every audience is different. Um, Mm. And the trick when you make a film is you just hope you find the right audience for that film. Each year with the films we put forward to the Cardiff International Film Festival, I think we have found that right audience. And when you watch it with the crowd, it just reminds you why you make it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Kate, unfortunately this year, we are not uh, all watching the films on the big screen together. Um, However, you're no stranger to producing content which is done purely through a laptop uh, over Zoom or whatever platform you use. uh, For Lifeline has been nominated this year. Now, um, I stumbled across this film a couple of months ago. Um, actually, I, I think I think you sent me an email. I think I, it might just got <laughs> lost. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, um, but Lifeline itself uh, it has gone on to many big things. Um, I think it's won a couple of awards now, and it is doing very well as a film. Um, so, what was it like to produce a film entirely through a laptop? Yeah, it's a very um, surreal experience to be honest. It's not something I wouldn't be against doing again because it's quite easy, you know, sit in your pajamas, produce something brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really good concept. Um, definitely something that I think everybody can do if they really put their minds to doing it. Mm. But yeah, very, very fun to be honest. And uh, Lewis, when lockdown came into play and uh, the country uh, eventually went into decline essentially because we all all are having to stay at home and we all are uh, restricted to what we can and can't do um did this idea just spark up for you did did, did the whole where did, what where did lifeline come from uh that's a very good question um i think the easiest answer is probably as filmmakers we felt a responsibility to make some kind of film during this thing so people could uh contextualize their feelings during lockdown and in terms of the inspiration for the film obviously there was so much in the news some stories were more harrowing than others and a lot of the sort of news coverage just blended into um one idea and um we decided to make a film not just about the consequences of being locked away in a home but uh the consequences of locking your own feelings inside yourself and what that might mean for an individual. Yeah, there was almost a bit of play on words there, really, I think, because, um, you know, actually lock, locking something down as well as locking down feelings. And that's actually, you know, very clever. Um, and you work with two amazing actors. Um, how, how, what was the casting process like for that, Kate? Uh, because, you know, you, we, can't, we can't meet people in person. This might have been your first time meeting these two actors. So, so what was the casting yeah. process like? So yeah, the casting process was really good. Um, everyone was sending in audition tapes. Uh, we worked with, well, I've worked with Alex before. Mm. Um, he's sort of got um, a theatre background and um, Lewis has worked with Toby before. So when we had them audition, we had to almost like play the video side by side just to see if they looked like good fit together. Yeah. And um, yeah, they've never met each other in person, only over Zoom. And uh, yeah, so luckily they um, had really good cat on screen chemistry and it was really shocking to see um, how well they adapted to filming at home. Yeah. And, and Kate, what, what has the response been like to Lifeline? Uh, we've had a really good response. Um, a lot of people have been writing in and saying that um, it's helped them in previous experiences that they had. Other people, they've solely for the story, they thought it was beautiful. Mm. And obviously that's down to Lewis's writing as well. And um, they connected so much with our characters. 
mm-hmm. especially um, Gem. A lot of people connected with him. Yeah. And uh, Lewis, this is not uh, the only film that you've got at the Cardiff International Film Festival this year. For uh, the graduation is uh, is also there. You, you seem to have been a very busy boy. Uh, <laughs> the that uh, the graduation, uh, obviously, an it's my shout film uh, now featured at the the festival. What was it like working on an it's my shout scale uh, set? Um, it was amazing. Um, also slightly uh, more people you have to prove yourself to and get your vision for the film across to, um, which was challenging, but also really helped me. Um, and I learned so much. And after that process, I, I've become a better filmmaker yeah. because of that. So ultimately, it, all positives. Mm-hmm. And you, you say you become a better filmmaker. Um, I'll, I'll put this question to both of you. What do you think makes a good film fa- filmmaker, film faker, filmmaker? <laughs> and um, and how, how, how does one become a good filmmaker? Lewis. Yeah. Uh, that's a, I think I can only answer that for myself personally. For me, it's all about the story having a story to tell and having a specific vision that you bring in as many collaborators as you can, but you don't compromise on. And if you've got that, then I think you can, you're on a, on a road to something that might look like success if you've got those two things. Uh, And Kate, you know, you're (laughs) primarily a producer. Um, However, I think you wear, you wear other hats as well. Um, But um, (laughs) What makes a good producer? What makes a good filmmaker? Um, personally, I'd say like it's different for everybody, but I think what makes a good filmmaker is just the passion and the drive behind it. If you really put your mind to it, anybody can be a really good filmmaker. It's just trial and error. Yeah. And I've learned that working alongside Lewis and a lot of other people, you, know, you come with stumbles, but you get over them and it just makes you better for the future. So yeah. passion is my way forward. And um, the festival uh, in 2020 is a little bit different. However, um, I hope that somebody, somebody out there, anybody out there watching this interview uh, will be inspired to go into the world of film themselves and hopefully put films forward for the 2021 festival, um, which I hope isn't done through Zoom and is in person. (laughs) Um, But Lewis, um, kind of what advice would you give to filmmakers out there who, who want to put a film forward for the 21 festival? Uh, you've got to make a film that is uh, you believe in enough to spend perhaps months of your life working on, if it's a short film or if it's a feature film, potentially years of your life. So as much as you have to bring other people on board the story, you have to really believe in it yourself. And I think you have to, if you can see it in your head and the characters are talking to each other, you normally that's when you normally know it's worth your time and it's worth doing. And probably yeah. other people are going to want to watch it too. And Kate? I'd say, um, sorry, what was the question again? I was sorry. Just the- <laughs> <laughs> I know I asked you, I asked you much at once. It's hard, it's hard juggling between two people. Um, but um, yeah. what advice would you give to filmmakers who are looking okay. to put uh, uh, films forward for the 2021 festival? I'd say definitely nail your story, uh, but surround yourself with people that believe in you. And you got to have belief in yourself. It's not going to work out if you don't believe in it. So that would be the drive forward. Yeah. And just finally, uh, to both of you, what is next for you? Um, because you know, <laughs> I, I generally don't know what's next for me, if I'm honest. No, <laughs> I'm, I don't think I'm making, it, I'm making it up as I go along. Um, but Kate, what's yeah. next for you? What project's next for you? Um, honestly, I wish I knew. I'm still looking and if people want to bring me on. This is my little show. You can bring me on the project if you would like. <laughs> and Lewis? Um, yeah, God, we're all in a bit of limbo. Um, I've le- been lucky to get a couple of things into production, although they're probably not any longer in production because of local lockdown. But, um, you know, with that comes freedom to write and write feature scripts, which I've done. So hopefully some of them will go into production in 2021. And, you know, I'd love to work with It's My Shout on something again in the future. They're, they're a fantastic company. Mm-hmm. And obviously anything with Kate. 
Well, um, I wish you all the best. Um, if you win uh, an award at the festival, um, I hope you thank me first, um, uh, <laughs> opposed to everyone cool. else. Um, thank you so much for <laughs> chatting to me and have a lovely day. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers.